Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. For the first time in a while, really, actually doing some astrophotography for real. Uh, we've got a clear night ahead of us, and I've got some lovely new gear to test from Player One. We're talking about the Filter Draw Max system, their FHD OAG Max system also, and the new Sedna M guide camera. This is all going to be paired up with the Player One Poseidon C Pro cam, uh, and it's all riding on my Esprit. I'm looking forward to testing this thing out really. Uh, I've managed to get a brief break in the clouds on an unrecorded night. Uh, it was really just too brief to bother, but it was enough that I could get the, you know, the guide camera and off-axis guider par focal with the main cam. So at least tonight I can just enjoy it and see what it's like in day-to-day -day usage really uh, and get to grips with it. So I'm gonna get this last, uh, if I can get up these stairs without falling off. Get that last turn buckle off, excuse the noise, and see how this roof rolls for the first time in a while. Let's go. Not too bad actually, it's a little bit stiff. Okay. Wow, that looks weird. Look it up and seeing a clear sky rather than just pure clouds like I've had for so long. Excited! <laughs> Alright guys, so uh, you might be wondering what exactly are we going to shoot for this first light session with all the new gear, the off-axis guider, uh, the guide camera and the filter draw system that I'm using now with this uh, Poseidon C Pro. Well, I'm thinking let's keep it simple but on a beautiful target. So I'm actually going to go after M51 and this is going <laughs> to be the target that kicks off galaxy season for me hopefully we'll get a good session on it tonight it's currently just 20 past 10 so uh not that late should get a good few hours on this thing um good to know for anybody out there who has purchased one of the uh poseidon or any of the player one cameras they've now updated the drivers for full implementation into nina so you can use the uh, actual native drivers and configure the um I'll get there. The dew heater that's built into the window, the amount of cooling fan power, the overall power you're re requesting from the cooler as well. So I can actually set off cooling and it works properly now as well. All your gains control all from here. Uh, yeah, everything is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna get everything connected up. I'll just leave this running and take you through my basic setup procedure. Most of you already know this, but um, why not just take you through along for the ride? It's not like any of us are in a great rush, I imagine. Um, astrophotography by its nature requires a level of patience, doesn't it? So I'm unpacking everything. Let's get the guider connected now and hopefully it remembers where I left off from that little mini session where I managed to get things set up. Um, looks like it has, yes, Sedna OAG. Just remembered it. And I can see stars passing through, so that's also promising <laughs> at least i'm not going to be messing around with that tonight i will i will tell you this by the way um off axis guiders with a helical focus are well worth it so much easier than trying to get things uh, set up otherwise you know with the little toggles sometimes you have to use an off axis guider and manually shoving your <laughs> oeg camera in and out no thank you um so we're going to use a framing wizard let's get things done m51 not actually sure what rotation I'm set to tonight, but it is what it is, isn't it? Don't really matter. Uh, you can frame it either way, whether I'm at one degree or 279.3, it's still going to fit. It's a small target. Um, let that set off and uh, let's see roughly where we are. It thinks it's almost slewed there now and we'll see where this first frame comes in. I think it's nailed it that time. We've got a very small overall error and I can now set up a simple sequence. So we're going to go add target to sequence, simple sequence. I'm going to work with this actually. So I'll set up a loop with, uh, in case I get some more time on this, I will tell it to slew to center and start guiding. I know it's going to do it again at the start of this, but I couldn't care less. I'm just... <laughs> glad to be back imaging so I'll, I'll uh you'll excuse me some inefficiency on this one 100 frames that should do for tonight 
autofocus on the start and I think every hour probably that sounds pretty good I'm gonna go with the time I think I'm gonna go for three minute exposures I've got the gain set to 200 the offset set to 200 I do want it to dither I think we'll dither every fifth frame that sounds pretty neat to me so every 15 minutes or so um, yeah camera set to cool everything's good I think it's time we hit go Now then guys, I decided it's time to give you a bit of an update, uh, not as originally planned, just a few exposures in. I thought it would be a better usage of your time and mine if I left it longer into the night, get more usage stuffed under my belt with this actual setup, and then I can give you a more robust report on what it's actually like to use it in a real session like this. So let's dive into it. How has it gone so far? Well, the session itself fine you know what i mean we're going we're going really well i think we're gonna have a decent image of m51 even though we're, we're on a full moon night so it's pretty horrendous amounts of light pollution i'm still gonna do my best and bring you an image uh, i'm just happy to be out imaging though that's the important thing i've not seen a clear sky in so long that i'll take anything at this point so uh, that's unimportant but what we're actually trying to report on or what i'm trying to report on for you is how has this system been to use actually as an astrophotographer uh really good basically if you want the tldr there it is really good probably gonna want a bit more detail than that though so uh, i'm gonna dive into that now so the off-axis guider um it's you know it's wonderfully well built the focuser the helical focuser moves smoothly there's no graunchiness to it there's no drag there's no slip also it just feels good with a nice focus movement weight to it um, it's a very fine focuser so it takes many rotations to move you know the length of its focuser travel so um, you've got a lot of fine control over getting things par focalized more on that in just a moment so really impressed with the build quality the prism size is massive so i think it'll support any guy camera you want to throw at it even right up to as it mentions on the website the imx174 pretty large guide sensor uh in this case i'm using the sedna which is an imx178 i am using it in bin two mode with one second guide pulses uh, and there's plenty of stars to pick from right now i am pointing out of the galactic plane right now so it's not like milky way imaging where there's just a swath of stars wherever you point Instead, we're looking out of the Milky Way right now into the more sparse regions of space because it's galaxy season. And uh, there's still plenty of stars. So that's one of the things I originally worried about a little bit with off-axis guiding. And um, I think many people worry about it too. Will I always be able to find a guide star? And I think the answer in 2023 with a CMOS guide camera is yes. You're not really going to have any issues whatsoever unless I think unless you're imaging at a monstrously long focal length with a very slow scope, I think you're always going to be fine. So this is 646 millimeters at f5.4. So not fast, not slow, just kind of middle of the road. And I've got a bunch to pick from with a one second exposure, right? I could increase the gain, lengthen those exposures with no degradation to the grinding uh, and get plenty more stars to pick from. So that's I think at this point in time, myth busted. It's no longer an issue that most images really need to worry about. Um, the guide camera, no complaints. I mean, you just saw the images there on screen. Pretty low noise. Uh, refresh is lovely and fast. You're not waiting around for anything. Just works. You know what I mean? It does its job perfectly. And uh, if you had interest in that kind of thing, you could... Like have it kind of double up as a lunar and planetary imaging camera too because I uh, think it'd do a wonderful job at that with those really small pixels you'd get a lot of spatial resolution from a uh, quite a small optic um, you'd be imaging very fine 
sampling ratios with it. Now, the filter draw system, everything goes in time after time, nice and repeatably. What is it to say? It's a filter draw and it does what it's intended to do. It lets you swap filters quickly and easily. It comes with everything that you're going to need in the box. Top marks, you know what I mean? It's a pretty simple piece of kit, but it does its job well, so I can appreciate that. As to installing everything, putting it all together, regrettably I didn't record that and I wish that I had it done because I'd have been uh, able to overlay some footage now and let you know, but all the same, I could just tell you what it was like. Pretty easy, not the absolute simplest thing, but thankfully Player One have released some videos to talk you through exactly how to put everything together. Um, which I used and it worked fine, you know what I mean, everything's screwed together, it's square. Um, you know, it's it's properly clamped down when you use multiple fasteners to tie things up rather than just some threads where a tiny little amount of undo or temperature related uh, creep can make things slacken off a little bit and wreak havoc. So inevitably you have to tighten things up, uh, which leads to <laughs> threads <laughs> seizing up. Talk to you about them, bloody hell. That's a never ending issue with astronomy, seized threads. But anyway, none of that with this, it all screws together, uh, which is a good point. Everything goes together super solid. Where there's a potential bad point, however, is if you want to swap this rig, and by rig I mean the camera, the um, filter draw, and the off-axis guider between multiple telescopes that have differing back focus requirements. They're perhaps shorter than the natural 55 millimeters that this setup gives you. Um, I am in that usage case scenario right now. So as everything's screwed together, I don't really want to take it all apart. So I'm probably going to be using this on scopes that are 55 mil or longer, right? So like my Redcat 51, that's absolutely fine. I can keep it on the Esprit, that's absolutely fine. But if I wanted to move things now to the Rasa, which is a 29 millimeter back focus, I'm stuffed. You know, I'd have to take everything apart, unscrew it all and uh, go from, from scratch and I just kind of don't want to do that because I don't have to do that. I have multiple other cameras that I can use on my Rasa, so I'm doing that right now. Not something really most people need to worry about. I'm very lucky in that regard that I have multiple systems and multiple cameras, but uh, nonetheless, I thought, got to be honest, report to you that that is a bad issue. Um, yeah, swappability is decreased with a... Uh, a system that uses internal fasteners to tie together rather than just threads but it comes with its own upsides swings and roundabouts in it that's life for you um but yeah the the guide camera is lovely and sensitive off-axis guiding love it getting things set up by the way pretty easy if you get things close during the day let's say on a distant target and then finalize by using imagine a bite off mask or whatever you like on your main scope, this is what I did, so I centered a bright star, used a bind-off mask, got it perfectly focused on the main camera, and then slewed that star out of the field of view into, let's say, the field of view of the off-axis guider prism, which is imagined somewhere around about here. Once that star appears on your OAG, focus that using the helical focuser, and then your main camera and your off-axis guider perfectly par focal so that when you do your autofocus runs and such everything's getting focused crisp every single time um, many of you probably already know that but for anybody setting up an OAG for the first time could be useful information for you so um, look I've gone on for eight minutes now I'm really sorry about the length of these videos but I've got a lot to say and uh, if I gloss over points people are lonely quite rightly mention it to me so um best to try and be complete which is what i'm doing now so look that's about it from me um the rest of my session unless a meteorite comes through the roof or something it's probably going to be pretty uneventful all things considered uh so i will spare you a further update and sign off now and just say as always huge thanks to everybody out there for uh, giving me your time uh and your support in the ways that you do it makes this whole thing so much... <laughs> I can't tell you exactly how much I get from it without going on another tangent, but look, 
Well, nothing but love for you all. I hope that you enjoy the videos half as much as I enjoy making them for you. I'll just say that. Um, that's about it. So, guys, look after yourselves. I uh, thank you all for your support, and I will see you in the next one. So, uh, yeah, until then, glitz, guys.